a song just came to me. Something about that name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lift your hands. There's just something about your name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim that kings and kingdoms there one day all pass away. But there's something about that name. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He'll never leave you when your friends have gone away he'll come to you at the moment that you're the lowest and alone hurting and he'll speak his peace into your life his presence wants to come this morning and overwhelm your senses and bring you back to that place that you know he's the one who died and if you'll just open up your heart and open up your mind and open up your life and just say holy spirit come in take over me i yield to you Will you lift your hands this morning and just say, I yield to you. I yield to you. Oh, I'm your vessel, Lord. Take all of me. I yield to you. Lord, you see everything. You see my strengths, my weaknesses. You see my comings and goings but you still love me as I am. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. Before you were ever even born, He saw a plan for you. And He made a decision right then and there to die for you. to give you that choice that one day you would say yes to Jesus. Yes. That's all he's looking for today is a yes. You say, but I? No. It's no longer I. It's not I that liveth, but Christ which liveth in me and the life that I now live. In this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. One of the greatest things we can ever do is practice losing ourself. Practice it. You know, Pastor Bob mentioned a few minutes ago about laughing. 
You know, the enemy wants to silence every Christian because your victory is in your mouth. And you don't realize it. 99% of the time, what we do spiritually is contrary to the natural. That's why it confuses the enemy. When trouble comes, into our lives, into our families, into our finances, through our children, through our friends, whatever it may be. And then we make a decision to go <laughs> way down deep. You say, what are you thinking about right now? Him on the cross. Him crucified. You know what I was thinking about just yesterday? <laughs> God could send no better than Jesus. It was his best. His best. No angel, the Son of God, perfect, holy, righteous, without blame, came in the seed of man, walked on this earth, and died for us. And then he rose again. And now, He is in heaven. And get this, He's interceding for you. You say, well, what's He praying? Let me tell you something. The enemy's plan is so deviated into getting you to look at you and to see your faults and your failures and your shortcomings. Jesus is on the other side praying for you that you will believe and trust in His blood and His finished work alone. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. You know, something that the Lord has really punched into my spirit, and it's really changed my thinking. Darren, you need to quit worrying about your shortcomings because I've paid that. You need to take that energy. You know, listen. You need to take all that energy and that concern and put it into believing me. Because that's what... See, this is something I'm learning. God is not looking at your sin. Do you know what He's really looking for? Faith. We spend, we have spent years trying to perfect ourselves and we can't. It's only the blood. What God is after, what He said in Hebrews, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you really, 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 really from your heart want to please Him this morning, believe Him. That's what he's serious about. He wants to be believed. He wants you to take him at his word. He doesn't care about your imperfections. And see, that's the ploy of the enemy is to trap us all in ourselves. And we can't get out of ourselves 
You know, I was listening to Miles Monroe, and he's in heaven now. But he taught a sermon, and he said, you don't have a spirit. And I, at first, my mind went, what? He said, you don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. And I was like, that's right. I'm a spirit. This, this flesh is just attached to me. So all these things, what did Paul say? I see something working in my members, and I want to serve God. I, I want to live for God. I, but I see something going against me. I'm going to have to reckon that thing dead. It shall not have dominion over me. It's not going to rule me. It's not going to control me. It's not going to guide me. And you say, well, well, how can I change it? Well, He's given us tools. You know, laughing's one of them. Spiritually, it's a force. Speaking His Word, it's a force. Praying in the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Romans 8. When we don't know what to pray. <laughs> you know, I don't mean I don't mean to really be so explicit this morning, but sometimes I find that it's like. I'm always living at this place of God help me to change to become more like you. And what I hear him saying to me is son turn a dead ear and a dead eye to the flesh concentrate on me This is where we win. When we say, Jesus, can't do it without you. We humble. See, and when we humble, see, that's what God wants. God doesn't want to judge us. God doesn't want to humble us. What he wants is he wants us to humble ourselves. And then when we open up our heart and our lives, His Spirit will come. And with His Spirit comes His anointing and His power and His presence. And that Word renews us, renews us, renews us, renews us, renews us. See, the reason you can't fail today is because God can't fail. And the reason you can't run how many of you ever saw that movie, The Truman Show, with Jim Carrey? And he's trapped in this little world, and he doesn't know it, but everybody's watching him. And eventually, at the end of the movie, he steps out of that world. You can't run from God because he's not going to change. That's why this place, to me, will always be home. Because in this place and on this property flows... The love of God and the unconditional. Pastor Bob and Susan Ann changed in 40 years. They just keep moving. See, and that's what God wants us to do. Just keep going. Just keep going. Well, Lord, I, no. Quit looking at yourself. Get up. Wipe yourself off. Let my blood renew you. And keep moving. God is not concerned about your mistakes. What He's concerned about is that we don't live for ourselves. Hallelujah. Let's do that. I am not ashamed. Willie, praise the Lord. Thank you, Father.
Oh, we're an anchor to those who are hurting. And we're a harbor to those who are lost. Truly, sometimes it's not always easy when we're sharing Calvary's cross. And we've been ridiculed by those who don't know Him. And we've been mocked by those who won't believe. Yet I love standing up for my Jesus because of all that he's done for me. You see, I am not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not afraid to be counted, but I'm willing. Say, I'm willing. I'm willing to give my life. Hey, brother, I'm ready to be all he wants me to be. I want to give up the wrong for the right. That's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Oh, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For every time that his hand held out his mercy for all the love and the grace that he's shown in my life a simple thanks it doesn't truly say how I feel when I think about it I get tears in my eyes I've made a decision as for me and my family I'm going to keep on believing in the one, the one who's been so faithful to me. I got to tell you, I'm not out to please man and this world around me. I've set my mind, I've set my eyes on eternal things. That's why I am not ashamed of the gospel for it's the gospel of Jesus Christ oh and I'm not afraid to be counted but I'm willing Lord I'm willing to give my life you see I'm ready to be everything that he's called me to be I want to give up the wrong for the right oh I am not ashamed of oh, the gospel I'll never be ashamed of this gospel because I've got too much behind me to ever let this world behind me the psalm is just a name, but in my heart, he means everything. Oh, I am not ashamed of the gospel. No, don't you ever be, ever be ashamed of the gospel. You got too much behind you to ever let the devil blind you. Oh, come on this morning. Give him praise. He's your everything. Sing. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Oh, I am not ashamed of the gospel. 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. He gave everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. Beg your pardon? Yeah, it's on. I got it on now. All right, we're going to have a little prayer time here. You, if you preached your message already, that's it. That, well, that's good. That's it because I, I knew, I think. I just think whatever was, had to be come out, it, okay. it, it came. Good. Amen. 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 You know, making decisions are very important. Decisions <clears throat> you make today is going to affect your tomorrow. And the decisions you make today is going to cause you to act and react in the future, believe it or not. See, my wife and me, people sometimes marvel because we are up in our 80s and we're still serving God just as strong as we did when we were younger. Because we made him Lord a long time ago. It, it is so simple. And, and, and Darren's tapped into that. And uh, Dan's tapped into that. Many of you have tapped into that. Regardless of what happens, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be where I, when I'm supposed to be there. And, and, and whether I teach... Uh, I've preached to thousands and I've preached to one. Yesterday at the wedding, uh, we had a young man that, you know, I mentioned a while ago that he accepted Christ and uh, he believed in his heart that God raised him from the dead and, and that he was water baptized. He mentioned all that. I said, that's wonderful. I said, isn't it wonderful that you're saved? He said, no, I'm not saved. I said, no, wait a minute. You said all of that. Do you believe all that in your heart? Yes. I said, you're saved. He needed somebody to tell him, you're saved. See, that's why Christ came to save, to give us life. We're talking about a new life. We're not talking about a natural life. We all have that natural life. We got that from our daddy and mama all the way back to Adam. But there's another type of life, which is a spiritual life that comes from God. And at some point, you will tap into that. Uh, I used to operate a bulldozer. Can you see me on a bulldozer? The big blade coming up, you know, and turning this way and that way, you know. But you cranked it with a natural gas. It had one engine on there, and you, and you, and you cranked it and got the motor running with natural gas. See, that which is natural is first, then that which is spiritual. And as the engine uh, heated up, and all of a sudden, about two minutes after you let that engine run on that gas, that's the natural life, you find the lever and you push it up. Boom! Man, that power came in there. That diesel fuel took over. Oh, I'm telling you, and that, that uh, bulldozer had strength to push over trees. Some folks that I meet are still running on the gas, the natural gas, and, and, and you just got to say, God, how do you switch over? Where's the lever at? It's a decision. That's the lever. lever. I am going to walk in the Spirit because I know what the Bible says. If I walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, how do you know when you're in the flesh? Oh, don't get me started on that. I'm clear that. <laughs> I could preach on that, believe me. But how do you know when you're in the Spirit? Let me tell you something. You just love people. 
Yeah, but I don't like their ways. No, I don't either, but I love them. Because the love of God's been shed in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And when you let that love be dominant, it, you know, that's that high test gas. You got that power to love people. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I, I know nobody in here has ever had anybody let you down. No, nobody in here has ever let you, anybody down. Huh? <laughs> What's new? Now, do you love them? See, some, I want to get some of you out of bondage into freedom by blessing people and forgiving people. Would you put, um, we're going to have prayer here this morning because I sense the anointing upon uh, a few folks in here. And uh, I won't mention any names, but one of them is uh, Darren and one of them is me and uh, a few other folk in here. But I want you to put First uh, Peter chapter 3 verse 8 and 9 and I want to set some we're going to set some people free here today are you ready to be set free or, or do you still want to just run off uh, natural gas how many of you know natural gas is getting expensive you, you got to learn to run, run off a of diesel power and that diesel see look what it says finally all of you who in the world is all of you say that's me should be of one and the same mind United in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender-hearted and humble. You see, somebody, you know, some people talk to me and they say, Bobby, it seems like the Lord is resisting me. Well, let's see, let's check your pride level. How many of you know that he resists the humble? No. Oh, I got you. I think you're listening to me now. No, he, 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 he what? Thank you. And what else it, it does? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, it's. He gives grace. When I stick this in your face, you don't even know your name. <laughs> Well, see, I got you laughing again. Now, you're, you're getting freer already. Have you noticed that? They're getting free. They're getting free to receive. See, so you get your heart opened up. See, God looks upon the heart. He don't look at the outward appearance. See, he looks at your heart. And when he sees your heart in the right condition to receive, you know, the ground has to be at the right condition for the seed to ferminate. That's why you don't plant seed in the wintertime. See, so, so. How is your heart this morning? Is it, is it ready for the seed? Because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So God wants to touch our heart this morning. He wants, he wants us to make some decisions. Now we had a, a tremendous Sunday school lesson in there. And it, it, it was about abiding on the vine. Abiding on the vine. Now I'm not going to try to copy uh, Darren. <clears throat> But I do carry a note. It's around here somewhere. Let's see. Oh, here, here it is right here. I got my note right here. <laughs> How is it with your soul? How is it with your life? Are you a half-born Christian or a whole-born Christian? You serve the Lord sometimes, and then other times you go with the world. You know, I was there years ago. I remember when God was bringing me in line with his word to live in the spirit 24-7. And some people say to me, Bob, have you ever made a mistake? Man, I've eaten a lot of steaks. <laughs> See, I got you laughing again. You're feeling better already, don't you? <laughs> some of you just ain't going to laugh, but i tell you one thing. <laughs> You can eat prunes if you want to. How many know I love you? I don't care if you look like a prune. I still love you. Yeah, I still love you. You can look like a prune. It's so good to see you, young lady. Oh, you bless my heart. Are you a prune Christian? <laughs> or a tune Christian? Are you tuned to the Holy Ghost? 
Are you ready to receive his power? Are you ready to receive a blessing? Christ has come to give us life and to give it to him more so abundantly. I tell you what, let's go to the next scripture. And we're going to clear the air and make sure we are putting ourselves in a position to receive. <clears throat> are you ready? Always return evil for evil. Huh? What? I missed that. Never. Because, see, you reap what you sow. Say, you reap what you sow. Say, never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Now, how many of you know we got to get God to do a work in us not to do that? Because, you know, back in my earlier days, I'm not going to go too much into it. But uh, you call me a name and you get two names back. How many people was there? Uh -uh, you know what I'm talking about? We, we used to sort of enjoy shooting one another when I was in the world, you know. But, but never return evil for evil. Why? Why ask questions when I read the Bible? Why, Lord? Because you'll reap what you sow, son. That's found in Galatians chapter 6. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. Now, when I learned that, I quit sowing bad seeds. Give me five, son. I love you. Say, I quit sowing bad seeds. Sometimes the best thing you can say is nothing. Have you ever seen a husband and wife fight? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't know how Susan and me, but we've been called to houses to be the referees. You know, get between a husband and wife, you know, and uh, well, we won't go into that, though. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, look, insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness, and protection, and truly pitying and loving them. When God does that work in you, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. You just have to bless people. You just love people. You just, you just, just smile at them. You just love them. You, you don't have to try. Uh, some, uh, people say, but Bob, I try. No, no more trying. Just let the Holy Ghost, Jesus be Lord. That's all you, you got to connect onto that. When he does that work in you, then he'll do a work through you. I know some people tell me everything they do, and, and I appreciate that, and that's good. But what is God doing? What is God doing in your life right now? Could you come up here and give us a testimony of what the Lord is doing in your heart right now? Can you do that? I can. I could talk like that, just like that. He's working in me all the time, making me love people. Oh, I love my wife. I tell her I love her. I appreciate her. And guess what I get back? Love. In the morning, love. At noon time, love. In the afternoon. And then it's time to go to bed. And we just love one another. In the morning, in the morning, in the evening. We just love one another. She scratches my back. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, when you get older, you just love that. Oh, she scratches my back. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Woo. Look out, Frank. Woo. Woo. I'm telling you, and I scratch her back. She says, right over there, right over there. Where's that, honey? Come over here. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh. She goes. <laughs> See, we spread love around our house. You walk in there and you walk into a cloud. Some people don't even want to leave when they come into our house. Do they, Darren? You'll testify to that. Hey, it's getting 12 o'clock, Darren. It's about time. <laughs> See, we can spread love. You feel love in this place because we love one another here. We practice that first scripture up there. Look at it. Oh, let's just look at Just let that burn in your heart. Everybody say, from now on, from now on I'm going to bring every negative thought into the obedience of Jesus Christ. I'm going to take it captive and give it to Jesus. And I'm receiving his love. 
His power. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. That means you simply walk with Jesus and he'll direct you. You know, I often uh, just enjoy Darren singing and all. He, he, you know, and, and sometimes I, I, I'll sing. What? Y- y'all don't think I can't sing? Oh, you, well, you don't hear me sing? Who's shaking their head like that? Tell them I can sing, Darren. <laughs> I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with Jesus. I love him because he first loved me. I now can love you because... He first loved me. Love you, son. I don't care what you do, but I give you counsel. Do it God's way, and you'll prosper. But I'll always love you because my love is not based on your performance. I don't understand it either. That's just the way God's love is. You can't help it. You just have to love people. Oh, my goodness. I can feel it now. I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit in this place right now. I can sense His presence. You got something you want to sing? All right, sing it, son. I thought I was done, but one word. And Willie, get that song the way ready. So many things, so many times what blocked me from receiving was my way. And the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. So I've had to learn that it's not my way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Listen. There are those who will tell you you won't make it. They've been caught up in a world of unbelief. Don't listen to the things they are saying just smile and tell them my God has made the way for me I know my God has made the way for me I know my God has made the way for me and I'm not moved by what I feel I don't live by what I see because my God has made the way for me There are those who will tell you that faith is foolish but they've been blinded and their hearts have been deceived Oh, but you just keep on listening to the things God's word is saying and smile and tell them my God has made 
the way for me. I know my God has the way for me. I know my God has made the way for me. And I won't be moved by what I feel. I don't live by what I see because my God, He's made the way for me. He's the way, the truth, and the life. I know my God has made the way, the way for you, the way for you. I know my God has made the way for me, and I won't be moved by what I feel. I don't live by what I see, because my God has made the way for me. I know my God has made the way for me. He's made the way. He's made the way. And I Thank you. Hallelujah. You're here and you know you need prayer. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And you need prayer. We want you to come up right now and let us pray for you. Sometimes, you know, people don't understand some of the feelings you have. But some of the feelings you got, if you feel blue, if you feel lonely, if you, you, need, you need somebody that has an anointing to break that off of you. I thank God I have a, a spirit-filled wife uh, in, my, in my, our lives. There's times that I, back in my early days I'd pick up anxiety, and I could recognize I got anxiety. <clears throat> and I'd have Susan lay hands on me, break that anxiety just like that. So you might be experiencing anxiety. You might be worried about something. You might have backslidden and you're not walking as close as you, sh you should to the Lord. You know what the Holy Spirit's already showed you. Just obey the Holy Spirit and let God uh, deliver you and set you free. And you can walk out, have dinner back there, and you can be relaxed in it. So and you may be here and you've never received Christ as your personal Savior. This is the day for you to receive him and invite him to come into your heart. You're worried about somebody. You're worried about uh, other people. The Bible says don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Notice, and the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, shall keep your heart and mind at rest. So we're going to pray for some folks. First person we're going to pray for, this young girl here. She's coming up. Look at her. Beautiful smile. Say, you come on up. And uh, Pastor Bob is going to pray for you. Amen. I know you're not worried about nothing. Yeah, you, you're, you're special. And God love, loves you so much. I have a couple of our elders and deacons come up and get behind these people as we pray for them. But first, I want you to know that you have forgiven everybody. And you're not mad at nobody. Have you forgiven yourself? Huh? Yes. Okay. Father, I want to thank you. Just raise your hands. Now, this is a time to receive. Put your antennas up higher. Yeah, you're going to draw the lightning, that's for sure. Lord, right now. Ooh, hallelujah. That peace right now. Thank you, Lord, for that peace that's flooding her soul right now. God, let her know. Let her know without a doubt how much you love her. See, it's the love of God that when we know we are loved and that he loves us, that brings the security in our lives for us to say no to everything that's not of God. Because we're secure in him and we don't need substance. We don't need anything other than life itself, and that is Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Jesus. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. And he is your Savior, isn't he? Yes, sir. If you die right now, where would you go? Heaven. That's right. Turn around and, and, and who can you live? She knows you. All right, somebody else want to come up. Hallelujah. Get blessed. Amen. You need to come up. Come on. Rachel, come up. I'm going to pray for you. You are special to God. So special. So pure. I sense a pure heart in you. You wouldn't offend God. You wouldn't offend nobody. You know why I know that? Because the love of God has been shed in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Everything's going to be fine. Father, I want to thank you right now for my, for, for yes, my daughter in the spirit. God, thank you for that anointing that's upon her. Woo, thank you, Jesus, for healing every hurt and every wound. Thank you, Lord, that any worrying, over-concerned about anything goes in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that's upon her right now. Receive my daughter. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. She's receiving. Thank you, Lord, for that peace. Peace, Lord. Peace of God. Yes, Father. For you are the God of peace. And we thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Just drink it in. Just drink it in, my daughter. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for those anointed hands. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All is well. All is well. Hallelujah. Well, yesterday you lost a sister. But you gained, you gained a, 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 you gained, what would you call him? He's your brother-in-law, all right? Okay, we appreciate we appreciate everything you do, and we, and we love you so much. Amen, amen. Okay, somebody else might need an encouraging word. What you got there for us? All right, come up here. All right, I want you to say, it. Lord, Lord, you are my Lord. You are my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. My joy. My joy. To do your will. Is to do your will. I say no. I say no. To the world, the flesh, the flesh, and the devil, and the devil. I totally belong to you. I totally be wow. <laughs> belong to you. To you. Your antennas, and the antennas up, all the way, both of them. Oh, yes. oh, the fan angle, oh, put them up there. Father, I, woo, hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. I sense in his heart, Lord, he's made a decision to follow you. And I'm not saying that he's way off anywhere, but there's just a continue being changed to the next glory. God is bringing you to the next glory. The Bible says in, the, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that he's changing us from glory to glory. And now you're ready for that next glory in him. I break the powers of hell that come against him. I loosen him from everything in the past, and I thank you for it. Father, he is free to love you and to serve you and to walk in the Spirit. And we thank you for this young man in Jesus' name. Woo! Amen and amen and amen. Woo! Glory to God. Love you, son. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Anybody else? Yes. I'm hearing one word, insignificant. If you feel insignificant this morning, I want you to come up here for prayer. If that word has come through your mind this week, I want you to come up for prayer right now. Insignificant. You know who I'm speaking to. If I'm speaking to you, get up here. Is that you? Come over here. Show the day I don't like you. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, Deborah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you what that is? That's a lie straight from the pit of hell, and I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it right now off of you. I curse every word, every thought from hell. I break hell's assignment right now on your life. We fall out of agreement right now. And I have a word for you from the Lord. He says, my daughter, never underestimate your value to me 
I love you simply for who you are and you bring pleasure to me when you come into my presence and fellowship with me that's all I desire is to be with you and for you to be with me thank you father father I thank you for touching her right now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet I thank you that the blood of Jesus cleanses her and washes her and she knows beyond the shadow of a doubt that she is on your mind Lord Jesus right now thank you Holy Spirit thank you thank you thank you thank you come on around here Deborah right here put your hand on her belly and pray in the Holy Ghost thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus he loves you you're precious to him precious 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 so he's starting to show me a little more yeah don't ever judge Hallelujah. Is that bear witness? Praise the Lord. Just keep just keep ministering to her girls. Thank anyone else? Anyone else? Anybody with pain? Anybody with pain? Any pain in your body? Anybody with pain? Come up here right now. If you've got pain right now, get up here. Don't hesitate right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. We rebuke all pain right now. Get off her body in the name of Jesus. Go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, right now. There it is. Your anointing destroys every yoke. Pain, get out of her body right now. You can't stay. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of you, Jesus. We rebuke it right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Total healing right now in her body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn here straight. Straight and center. Lift your hands. Where's it hurt? Your stomach. Give me a lady. Come on up here. Go ahead, Grace. Right there on her tummy. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke this pain. Go. Right now. Go. Right now. Your healing power right now, Lord, flows right into her right now. In the name of Jesus. There it is right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you that she is healed by the blood of Christ, by the precious blood of the Lamb. He did not do this for nothing. By his stripes you were healed 2,000 years ago, Lizzie. Receive it. Thank you for making her whole. Thank you for healing her body right now. Thank you that her body and her stomach and her digestive system is functioning and it's lined up right now the way you created it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you've done in her life. Lord, just let her know how much you love her the deepest recesses of her soul and her heart. Just let her know she is loved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that love. Receive his love, Lizzie. You are Jesus. Now, I didn't say this earlier, but when he was praying for you, I don't know you, so I can say this. The Lord says you're going through an overwhelming circumstance right now in your life he wants to use this to show you how much greater he wants to be in you so let him in 
let him in. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So whatever's going on, if it's overwhelming you, it's not overwhelming him. And he will prove himself through you, in you, to you. Do you understand that? It's an opportunity for you to grow in faith and your relationship with him. So just lay it on him, give it to him, and fellowship with him, and you'll sense a new strength come up within you, and you're like, hey, I feel all this is going on, but I'm fine. That's him. Okay? God bless you. Anyone else before we close? You know, there's a song that says, but when the water's troubled, when the anointing's moving, move with it. Yeah. Well, you can still come. If not, let's go ahead for those that are getting hungry. Anybody getting hungry in here besides me? <laughs> Listen, make sure you go back and eat. we got food back there. And, and I'm going to stand up here, and Darren's going to be up here for a little while. If you still need prayer, come up, and we'll be glad to pray for you. Let's say the blessing. Father, we thank you now for the food of the Spirit. But we thank you now for the food to keep our flesh. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we want to keep them healthy and strong. And we thank you.
this time that we can dine together with one another and with you. And we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you.